Off day, ladies and gentlemen, this oversight hearing on the Guam Regional Transit Authority is hereby convened by the Committee on Guam U.S. Military Buildup, Infrastructure, and Transportation. Just in compliance with the open government law, I want to notify uh, the public that the initial notification for this oversight hearing was sent out on Wednesday, August 29th, and the subsequent notification, which is also a requirement by the open government law, the second notice was sent out on August 31st. The items on the agenda today would be primarily the discussion of the Office of Public Accountability Audit on the Guam Regional Transit Authority's GRTA non-appropriated funds between the, the timelines of April 2016 to March 2018. At this time, I'd like to recognize my colleague for joining me this afternoon, Senator Sanoxin. Thank you very much, Senator, for joining us for this oversight hearing. If I can invite Mr. Rick Augustine, who is the general manager for GRTA, uh, and any of the board members or other administrators that you would like to have join you. If you can invite them up to the, the front. And it, I do see representatives of the Office of Public Accountability would you like to also join in the discussion? Just for, for the information of the community, on August 21st, 2018, the performance audit that was conducted on the non-appropriated funds for the Guam Regional Transit Authority was released to the appropriate stakeholders, inclusive of the governor and members of the legislature, as also the public. And part of the findings of that particular audit reflected several things, and I would like to highlight this and then allow the administrator of the Guam Regional Transit Authority to be able to provide appropriate response. The purpose of this oversight hearing is to understand uh, not only, or to recognize not only the recommendations and the findings of the Office of Public Accountability, but since the completion of this performance audit on the non-appropriated funds, what has management at GRTA what actions have they undertaken in terms of addressing some of these concerns and some of these findings? It's very important that when we're dealing with non-appropriated funds, uh, that in fact there are appropriate mechanisms in place to ensure that there's no mis misuse or, uh, unlaw or law unlawful taking of some of these proceeds. I will read captions of the summary that was provided to the chair and also was, is inclusive in the audit report. And the objective of the audit initially was to determine whether GRTA's fund was properly managed and accounted for in accordance with applicable laws, regulations, and best practices. And like was mentioned a little earlier, the time frame in which the performance audit was conducted is within the dates of April 2016 to March 2018. The results of the audit, and I will allow management to be able to provide their appropriate response. The results of the audit found that no accounting system and lack of basic controls were in place. Secondly, also that $55,000 in bus fares were not deposited. Third, no monitoring or reporting of GRTA fund. And then fourth, finding was no significant deficiencies on the disbursements. The conclusion by the Office of Public Accountability was we found that the GRTA fund was not properly managed and accounted for in accordance with applicable laws, regulations, and best practices. GRTA management did not prioritize internal controls over the fund to reduce risks of theft and misuse of GRTA's program income. As a result, $55,000 in GRTA bus fares reported in the contracted bus operator's contractor invoices were not deposited into the fund. Recommendations included five items. And uh, Mr. General Manager, Mr. Augustine, what I will do is I will read the recommendations and then we will go back to number one, the first recommendation, and then we'll start off with that in terms of any action that you as the manager of GRTA has undertaken in addressing some of the recommendations provided by the Office of Public Accountability. So the first recommendation was 
to include specifications for the process of depositing bus fares collected by the contractor in its formal contract, including more detailed reporting of bus fares and ticket sales, i.e. cash, check, credit card payments collected by the contractor and each subcontractor to allow GRTA to reconcile against deposits. The second recommendation was to assign staff to actively monitor receipts and verify the completeness of bus, bus fare deposits. The third recommendation was to adopt proper control activities, including establishing effective policies and SOPs, maintaining a check register, and performing bank reconciliations. Fourth recommendation was to send appropriate staff to NAF, which is not appropriated for management training. And the fifth recommendation by the Office of Public Accountability was to be more transparent and accountable by reporting the fund's activity to those charged with governance, including the GRTA board, and if requested by the legislature or the governor. Uh, Mr. Augustine, before I, I allow you to uh, provide any feedback in response to some of the recommendations, if the Office of Public Auditor has any additional comments you would like to provide the committee before we open it up for presentation by GRTA representatives. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. We did um, have some communication after the uh, audit was issued, and so GRTA, Mr. Augustine himself, had reached out to us to ask for some assistance and how to uh, implement their new SOPs and what have you. So they I'm did sorry, just for the record, if you can identify yourself for the record. Oh, yes, Yuka yes. Hechanova, Deputy Public Auditor at the OPA. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we, we wanted to offer some assistance but had to caution him that we have to remain independent uh, in case we come back and audit uh, again. We cannot come back and audit our own work. So as much as we wanted to provide the guidance that he requested, we instead uh, referred him to some websites like at the Association of Government Accountants for some best practices and but did uh, let him know that it would be his responsibility to come up with the, um, the SOPs and the guidance that they would need to, to close the recommendations. And also, did you want to add about the reconciliation of the $55,000 that was identified and not deposited? after your audit was completed? We actually, actually Ira is the staff auditor who just did a comparison of what they had reported in the invoices versus the bank statements and she noticed that there was $40,000 that was not deposited. And so when uh, we went to talk to them about the $40,000, GRTA went to um, the contractor and it turns out that there was another $15,000 that was not deposited. Uh, the contractor did deposit the 55000 um, shortly after that, so the money has been deposited. But we're only looking at a two-year period. We, we didn't go back and look at the other periods, and we're not sure if there's any other funds that might be missing. Okay. I just wanted to ensure that, from your perspective, having conducted the audit over the time frame that was highlighted, that the $55,000 was identified to not have been deposited was remitted after you identified that as a concern? Yes, after, okay. we, after we brought just it to their attention. Because that was one of your, your findings in the performance audit, and I just want the people of Guam to understand that, yes, the funds were remitted. The issue here comes back to control and the mechanism to be able to ensure accountability of all the funds. Yes, absolutely. So. That's, that's exactly right. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Yuka. Uh, Mr. Augustine, if you can identify yourself and then those who are, have joined you on the table and then you can provide response to, I will ask you the first question, uh, first recommendation that was provided and I will repeat it is uh, to include specifications for the process of depositing bus fares collected by the contractor in this formal contract, including more detailed reporting of bus fares and ticket sales collected by the contractor and each subcontractor to allow GRTA to reconcile against deposits. So that is the first recommendation that was provided by the uh, OPA with regards to the performance audit. And if you can identify yourself with the record and then respond to that particular uh, recommendation. And if you notice, the, the format of the hearing is there's already a recognition of findings. My concern as chair is what has been undertaken and what has GRTA done 
to be able to ensure that these recommendations are either uh, addressed or uh, respond whether there's already a system in place. Uh, Mr. Augustine, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Lee, Senator San Augustine. Uh, my name is Enrique Augustine, the Executive Manager for uh, Guam Regional Transit Authority. Uh, two of my senior staff on my left is Myra Abaya. She's still on leave, but she came back from the Philippines to be part of this. And uh, Riley Filipina, my uh, chief uh, planner. But most importantly, I have the Honorable uh, Mayor um, Luis Rivera, the board chair. I have an opening remark, uh, Senator, but I will forego that and uh, give it to your staff. On uh, item number one, uh, maintaining a check register. Our original uh, method of uh, conducting our uh, and collecting our records is through bank statement and deposit slips uh, from the vendor. However, we are very lacking on uh, and short of people. We don't have an accountant. But however, I, uh, I did find uh, somebody that is uh, expert on Excel, one of the newest employee, RPC2, and I offer a check register that was developed as a sample. So to answer the, the recommendation on item number one, uh, we have developed a, uh, a check register. This has not yet been approved by the board. Uh, we are meeting, uh, we are having a board meeting on the 18th of this month. And we will go through this check register and ask the board and other staff uh, if there's any uh, additional information or a better product of this sample here. Uh, this is just a sample of, of the 2017 uh, register that captures all of our expenses and all of our revenues. Mr. Augustine, was this in existence prior to, or is this, was this created subsequent to the performance audit? Uh, this was created after the performance audit. I, I did ask, reach out to, uh, to the deputy OPA and she referred me to a green book. I think it's a uh, accounting process uh, done at the federal level. Uh, but this is something that uh, we came up with and it was my PC2 that actually drafted this Excel. So we have a better way of, of tracking uh, all the debits and credits. So this, I mean, I understand that the board is gonna be uh, reviewing this and adopting it. Uh, Madam Mayor, have you had the opportunity to review this? No. Yeah. Okay. Another thing is this uh, register formatted document would encompass each and every transaction. The way this is formatted right now, uh, Senator, is it would capture all invoices, all receipts, uh, bank statements and whatever it is that we need to have a solid NAF tracking process. Can I also recommend uh, before, I, and this is, this is coming from the chair, uh, recommend that prior to having the board adopt this format because at least you have a resource now. You have a document that based on your understanding would incorporate each and every transaction associated with the non-appropriated funds account. GRTA account. I would recommend that you also seek guidance from your sister agency, and I literally say sister agency, Department of Administration that deals with uh, non-appropriated funds or any of the other government of Guam agencies that deal with uh, similar accounts, because rather than reinventing the wheel, it's, it's about uh, looking at what already is existing within the government of Guam family and seeing if in fact this is sufficient to address your concern and the findings of the OPA. You have any guidance or recommendation, Yuka? If they have 
as as we go through the process when they submit us documentation to close the recommendations that's the time when we would review whatever they but we haven't seen anything yet so far so okay, I couldn't because comment because it's still subject to the board's consideration yes yes yeah and if I may I yes madam mayor um because with the mayor's council of Guam we get our we get audited annually and so you know if this is something that's needed and uh, we've already been through the process and this is something I can share with GRTA, you know, um, how we, we keep our books with Mayor's Council of Guam, you know, because, we, you know, like I said, we, we do have the annual audit and then um, we can get advice from, from the OPA um, if, if, if it'll work because it's, you know, also NAF that we deal with and then the reporting mechanisms to follow. Thank you, Mayor. Now, one, one uh, follow-up question. Now, how would you cross-check this register, which is reflective of all the transactions in the non-appropriated funds account, with the activities of the contractor, the bus operator, because that, that I believe is where the dis discrepancy appeared, where $55,000 over a two-year time frame was not registered until such time that the books were looked at between the contractor and what GRTA uh, had in place, and then that's where the $55,000 had to be reconciled. So that's, that's my question. How would you reconcile this register with the contractor's information? The number of bus riders, the fees that are generated on a daily basis and whatnot. Uh, we do have a, uh, a document that the contractor gives us uh, as part of their uh, billing and uh, revenues. I um, on, on another uh, note, um, Mr. Chair, while we're waiting for my handout, is that I did reach out to the OPA and I asked specifically, uh, is there another agency similar to ours that has an NAF, non-appropriate fund, that we will use that as a model so we can, in fact, uh, make sure that uh, we're headed in the right direction. And uh, the model was not uh, suggested to us because it would compromise um, uh, the, the audit process, I, I, I believe, in the future. But just on that note, uh, Ms. Augustine, the mayor just alluded to the, the Mayor's Council of Guam Working yes, with non-appropriated funds, I, so that's. I, I mean, I agree that we would. You have you that. have a mayor that already has access to a similar program, uh, that should be able to share some of that information. Okay. Okay, um, senators, we're going to go through the five items that were recommended by the OPA, and then I will open it up to to questions. So, um, Mr. Augustine, I'm still waiting for that response in terms of how the contractor's information would be would be reconciled with, with this. Register. Okay. I'll, I'll provide that as okay. soon as we find it. Okay. Okay. The next uh, recommendation by the OPA was to assign staff to actively monitor receipts and verify the completeness of bus fare deposits. And obviously, it all deals with the same fund account. So, Mr. Executive Manager, I have asked my, uh, I have asked the uh, board secretary to look at courses that are offered, either Excel or other uh, QuickBooks, I think is one of the recommendations. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a program that is not excessively costly, uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, sufficient enough for uh, what we're trying to do. I have another handout here of what, what eventually would happen. But Mr. Augustine, have you assigned staff? Yes, I, okay. I, I have assigned my, uh, my secretary to look at courses so I could no, no, but have you assigned staff specifically to monitor the receipts? Um, it would be... And verify yeah, the bus fare deposit. Yes, it, it would be the uh, acting ASO because my, uh, my, uh, my uh, Myra is retiring this month. Uh, so so uh, I, I would send uh, Jennifer... Uh, person that's acting in the capacity of Mara 
and I will send the board secretary. Those are, those are the two that I will send. I've already had discussion with them previously. Okay, so you've identified two staff members. One would be the board secretary. Yes. And then the other one would be a program coordinator too? Uh, no. The program coordinator too uh, actually does a lot of work. Okay, who's the uh, other individual? It will be... Uh, Jennifer and... Jen Jen Jennifer is the acting. Okay. Okay, so you've, already, you've identified two staff that are going to undergo, and we're going into one of the other follow-on questions or recommendations, but uh, you have identified two personnel that would be responsible for undergoing some necessary training and then also ensuring that the records reflect and reconcile the account activity with the contractor uh, information. That's, that's correct. I, uh, I, the uh, handout that is being made possible. Yes. Uh, What's your timeline, Ms. Augustine, for the training? You've already identified two individuals. I take it that they have now been assigned to they undertaking been, this responsibility? They have been verbally assigned, and the secretary, or secretary, has been instructed to call GCC to find out what courses are available in accounting. Can Spe I? Can especially I, uh, on, on Excel or uh, QuickBooks. Okay, so what's your timeline for participation in a training program and completion? Uh, as soon as there's a course available and the uh, board approves the cost for that training. So we'll probably by uh, the, this month, not probably, by this month I would ask the board to approve the training uh, pending uh, the, when the training is actually going to be conducted and then we will know when those courses are available. Okay. So as soon as the course becomes available, uh, we will send people. We have some excellent resources in, in the government of Guam family also that uh, certainly can provide at least an initial informal training on, on the identification and, and uh, accounting and the responsibility associated with unappropriated funds in the interim yes. until such time that, that that training is completed. So. Please take that into consideration. The third recommendation was to adopt proper control activities, including establishing effective policies and SOPs, maintaining a check register, which you provided us a copy, and performing back re bank reconciliations. So have you undertaken any action on that recommendation? We do have a, uh, a resolution that followed by a policy and procedures on how to handle petty cash. Uh, we will now have to develop a, uh, a policy to uh, address every issue that the, uh, or every finding that the uh, auditor uh, have uh, have shown us and that we will take action on it. Uh, here's a uh, policy and procedures for GRTA. This was uh, not done recently. This has always been uh, in, in our uh, system. So perhaps, you're presenting, perhaps, perhaps that you're presenting the committee with petty cash fund procedures Petty cash request and reimbursement, petty cash custodian agreement. OPA representatives, have you had an opportunity to review some of these documents? Yes, those are specifically for petty cash. We wanted to see the SO. They had a separate SOP for handling the, the checking account, but it really lacked a lot of uh, control features. It was maybe a page or two long and it wasn't complete so we, we did see the petty cash but the petty cash is just one component of an expenditure that they make from the fund okay did you recognize and understand that recommendation yes yes okay. I do Mr. so Chair. what SOPs have you uh, pursued or are you working on establishing that would address the non-appropriated fund, the entire fund not just petty cash we have not uh, started uh, that SOP uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if you would refer to this handout. 
uh, this handout will now dictate how our SOP will move forward. Uh, if I may be allowed to read, uh, effective 1 October, this is pending the board's approval, no GRTA bus tickets will be sold at the vendor's facility. All bus tickets will be, brought, will be bought at the Treasurer of Guam, located at ITC building uh, first floor. Uh, we currently uh, have that uh, process. Uh, bulk sale of bus tickets for all government agencies will be done at GRTA office via a voucher or a cash, cashier's check or agency check. We will not accept cash. Third, uh, GRTA staff per personnel will pick up from the vendor's facility all money. This is cash that people put on the, uh, on the fare box. Um, and will be collected. Uh, the, the money that was collected from the previous days will be picked up and made a deposit to the bank. So when we have two shifts uh, with the drivers. When they first come in, as they do now, they put it in an envelope and it's counted later by uh, the vendor's uh, accountant. Uh, we will be the one in control of that envelope. We will pick it up the, uh, that afternoon. And on the night shift when they come in at the end of the day at, at 8.30, that cash we will pick the next day uh, from that envelope and deposit to the bank. I have spoken to my... Um, do you have... Do you have uh an SOP or a policy that highlights that step, no, that no, procedure? No, that, this is what I'm saying, uh, Mr. Chair, is that because this is something that I'm recommending to the board that once it's accepted, we will, we will come up with an outline and a policy addressing specifically moving forward how we're going to do things. So where are the bus riders on this? Your, your proposal that you just presented is that all payments for bus fares now would be centralized but at the contractor's facility and also at GRTA. I, I don't understand the question. You said, where is the bus riders? So, so all the payments and the receipt of bus fares would now be collected at the Treasurer of Guam? Is that correct? At no. ITC building? No. The process is, is this. When Please, because our, some of our riders are listening. Right. When, when a rider gets on board the bus, they put their money in the bus fare collection. If they have a ticket, they will show it to the driver. Those tickets have already been previously bought and accounted for. So the money, the coins, the 35 cents, the dollar fifty, at the end of the shift will be collected and put in an envelope. That day, after that shift ends, we will pick that those envelopes plus the envelope from the previous night because the bus driver don't come into around 8.30 at night. So take those uh, envelopes and go directly to Bank of Guam and uh, deposit the money in Bank of Guam. We have thought of using a company maybe like G4S, but that's going to be too expensive. Uh, we have other better things to do with our NAF funds. So, uh, Mr. Chair, we don't have that policy yet. It's pending the discussion with the, with the board, and then we will outline an SOP and create an SOP, and then have them approve it, and then we will provide a copy to you and the OPA. I think it's important to note also that I have a short-term solution, which is uh, in one of my response to the OPA findings itself, and that is to hire a bookkeeping firm to maintain all records, invoices, vouchers, and make a monthly report to the GRTA executive manager so that this will be reported uh, during the GRTA board meeting. And the reason why I'm doing that is we wanted a professional to go uh, start us off in the right direction. And the long term is to uh, actually uh, get ourselves uh, a staff who is actually an accountant. We were authorized accounting uh, accountants before, however, that was removed from our organizational chart. Okay, so right now it's still pending uh, 
any board decision in regards to your recommendations and then we're still probably months away if not a year away from formulating a, an SOP? No, uh, it, the because SOP shouldn't take that long. The SOP would be reflective of something that the staff would have to uh, adopt or it would be adopted by the board, implemented by yourself. The staff would have to understand it and ensure that everyone is properly trained, especially the two individuals that you identified would be uh, responsible for the receipt and the, and the accounting of all of the proceeds. So now I'm hearing that you also want to hire a bookkeeping firm and I'm looking at, or I'm thinking about your staffing pattern and seeing if there's anyone that you, you already identified two individuals that would be responsible for initial bookkeeping and account, accountability and formulating the uh, registrar that you provided us, uh, I, then now we're looking at also adding to that and hiring a bookkeeper. I'm, I'm recommending that that's what we do on the, on the onset while we're sending people to training. Uh, the, the two people that I mentioned is a secretary, a board secretary, uh, she's not an accountant. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer is uh, not an accountant. Uh, there's, a, there's not a lot to learn to maintain this, but they have to understand accounting principles. Uh, so it's not going to take a whole year. We have a very small staff, and it's getting smaller. But we will make it happen. But and it's not going to take a whole year, Senator. And I believe that anyone that's dealing directly with cash collections and deposits, that they have to... Uh, undergo an initial training over the Department of Administration and how to handle cash, and they have to be certified from that perspective. So uh, will, take a look at that, Mr. Augustine. Take a look at uh, what the requirements are of the government of Guam in terms of actually dealing with cash. Absolutely. Because there's, there, there are some initial requirements. If you're dealing with a massive amounts of cash, then, then it's a bonding insurance requirement for certain agencies. But if you're dealing with non-appropriated funds, then there's another yes. mechanism that is required to ensure that uh, the public's funds are properly uh, expended, collected, and accounted for. Okay, the other question you already answered, uh, Mr. Augustine, send appropriate staff to non-appropriated fund management training. You said that you're gonna try to identify training opportunities for the two of the staff members that you have identified to be responsible for this, and then uh, provide the chair, as well as uh, others inclusive of the board updates on that. So the final recommendation by the Office of the Public Auditor was be more transparent and accountable by reporting the funds activity to those charged with governance, including the GRTA board and if requested by the legislature or the governor. And I take exception and if requested because there's a mandate in every budget law that requires any agency inclusive or non-appropriated funds that on a quarterly basis that the fund activity has to re be reported to the governor's office and to the legislature. So it's, it's not about a recommendation. This is, is really not a recommendation when it comes to including the legislature and the governor's office. It is a mandate by law. So that we, my office had uh, done a little bit of research just the last two years in terms of communications from GRTA and we have yet to receive any financial accounting or register that reflects the funding activities of the GRTA non-appropriated funds. So that's another mechanism, another requirement, uh, Ms. Augustine, that has to be complied with. And I encourage you to take a look at the law because it does specify exactly what the requirements are uh, on a, a quarter, at least I believe it's a minimum or a quarterly basis that the fund activity be reported to the respective chairs as well as the Speaker of the Guam Legislature and the Governor's Office. So, so we can we anticipate receiving some financial report on the fund, uh, Madam Chair, uh, let's say within 60 days? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can manage that. And I, I really apologize um, for um, not bringing that up, you know, when we first opened up this NAF account, because, you know, I do know with, with us at the Mayor's Council of Guam, with our NAF, we are to report it, you know, to um, the governor and the legislature, and, you know, um, to, um, you know, all our uh, different places, you know, that um, need to be informed of what's going on, especially if it deals 
with our government offices. Um, so right now, you know, we are are learning a lot. We're just trying to get off, you know, off the ground and um, make things right. Um, there was a lot of stuff that were not done at all. And so now that we're, we're trying to get um, personnel in, you know, to to do things accordingly and make sure that everything is done correctly. And, you know, um, again, we never put in a report because I don't think um, it was brought up. And we really appreciate it when you guys send staff to to our monthly meetings so that whatever we discuss and is needed, any concerns or advice that you guys can give us, we welcome it to move forward and do things correctly. Thank you very much, Mayor. And it really just comes down to the accountability and responsibility as we deal with non-appropriated funds because that's actual cash yes. collected on site within an agency. And we want to ensure that uh, whatever comes in is actually accounted for and expended appropriately. So just you understand the magnitude of this, yes. Madam Mayor and Ms. Augustine, I'm sure you do. And this is one of the authorization that you as executive manager had requested, the authorization to establish a special fund, the non-appropriated funds a few years ago, so that you can be able to expend it as you, you see fit in accordance with the laws to take care of some of your operational needs. So that's where we, I mean, it's been two years. If the OPA had not conducted its performance audit, $55,000 of unaccounted for cash from bus fares would never have been reconciled. Would never have been reconciled. And I say that because the OPA is a third party outside of the entity looking at the paperwork. And when that was identified, it was recognized as unaccounted for cash where the contractor immediately stepped in and remitted the $55,000. So it's not a question of challenging and, and saying, no, that was not the case. It was recognized as an unaccounted for cash that was otherwise generated by the agency for the services that you provide the community that could have been utilized specifically in the last two years for other operational requirements. So that's what we're here for in terms of looking forward. What have you done? What are your plans? What are your timelines? Who have you identified to be responsible for this cash accounting process, especially with Myra leaving Myra. Uh, on behalf of the members of the legislature and our people, we want to thank you for your service to the community. You have been invaluable to Ms. Augustine and, and to the board members over the past several years. You'll be missed, but we need to make sure that we fill the gap in terms of, of your absence and your departure from the department. So, uh, thank you I very thank much you to Mr. Chair and Senators. Thank you. thank you. I'm going to open the questioning now to the members of the body. Senator Augustine. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, just looking at the, at the uh, your listing of the results of OPA, one s specific question, Mr. Augustine, when was the Mass Transit, Guam Regional Transit Authority created, and when did you take over? Transit Authority, the Guam Regional Transit Authority, uh, was created in March 2009. 2009, and when did you take over, sir? September 2014. September 2014, and yes. what happened in 2014? I'm trying to be very specific, Mr. Augustine, so I just don't want to beat around the bush for you. I'm looking at this OPA report. It talks about April 2016 to March 2018, and I'm looking at this great paper you're giving out GRTA check register, uh, your recommendation for your, I guess your, um, your SOP and stuff like that. And you've been around in the Gulf of Guam for a while, am I correct? Rick, you've been around, right? Uh, about 18 months at the Port Authority. Okay, so, uh, and, and, and I know you're, other than the mayor's office, being very well knowledgeable about NAF, but so is DOE. And DOE has been on the news about NAF forever. So if we want to talk about NAF and if you needed any help, I know that uh, um, DOE would have helped you. 
I would have asked, if you needed help, you could have just reached over and asked me, but I'm going to ask them also to reach out and help you on what you're doing. You've got internal auditors, they can help you, because I understand where the OPAs come from. They can only lead you to the door. It's up to you now to get walk in the door and figure out what you need. What just bothers me a little bit, Rick, as uh, Mr. Augustine, is that March 2018, it's September. When we met last year, remember we talked about GRTA, and you asked me you needed funding, you needed a source of funding. Currently, if I'm correct, you're being funded by the liquid fuel tax. How is your funding? Is it through the liquid fuel tax through DPW? The liquid fuel tax is something that we share or DPW. Are share, you being sir? funded, sir? That's my no, question. No. You're not being funded. How are you being funded then? The Guam Highway Fund. Guam Highway Fund. And how much do you receive, sir? The, the reason, what I'm trying to get at is, number one, $55,000, what OPA finds. Mass Transit or Guam Regional Transit started in 2009, 2014. We're finding out there's $55,000 unaccounted for. I'm just curious, before you got on board, how much money is lost? I remember in the past, I remember I even brought this up to you last year. Why hasn't somebody thought of putting parking meters all over the place to help your funding? Everybody parks everywhere and nobody's providing you funding in some source. I want to help you. I want to be able to help everybody out there that needs a right to get around Guam. But I need to see that the, the Guam Regional Transit Authority is going to be efficient. Not just a bunch of vehicles running around the road and not having true accountability. Because I know, and I'm almost sure you have your own checking account, what money is received, you know where it's going to go, what you need to pay. It's basic. It's, it's, it's not a lot. It's not a hard course. And, you, and you're familiar, I'm a, I'm a former tax investigator, I'm very knowledgeable, I know exactly what, do, what you need to do to count for money. And it just bothers me that um, March 2018, Mr. Augustine, and I'm, uh, if, you're, if you're trying to find a course, being the oversight chair of education, I would have had Mr. Underwood find you a course. Or I would have even asked Ms. Dr. Okada, find you a course and help you out. I mean, it's that easy, sir. I would only ask you, Reach out front to us. You need help? Reach out because I'm willing, I'm willing to help you. I want to see the Guam Regional Transit Authority succeed. We have too many cars on the road. There's a lot of people who love to get on the bus. I know a lot of family members that have ridden the bus, but they want the bus to be on time. They want the bus. And, you know, you and I, like I said, we talked last year. I want to help you. I want to help everybody in Guam. Not just necessarily you because... Times will change, whether it be somebody else, even like the mayor. She'll be retired. She'll move on. But I like to see, after reading this OPA report, I'm like, wow. Mr. Augustine, I extend my hand to help you and your agency. Please reach out. And, I have, and you don't need to rebut anything. I understand the dilemma you're in. I just wanted to express that. that I just hate to see your staff get a beating throughout the remainder of the year and they really can't get their foot into, into solid foundation where when the OPA starts going over another uh, performance audit, they're going to find the same things. If you need some support, I think John Fernandez will help you. If you need a course, I think Mr. C uh, Dr. Kreis at UOG or Dr. Carter will find a way to help you guys for a course if you really need it. And if that's the kind of help you need, I know we can reach out for you. Okay? And I will reach out for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Senator Sanagstein. Senator Lee? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, in an earlier response to the chairman, Mr. Augustine, you were mentioning, and, and I had questions about this too, in terms of the OPA audit and their concerns about putting proper accounting protocols in place. And you said that you would have your board secretary and the acting ASO uh, be sent to training. Is that correct? That's correct. Where are you sending them? If the training reveals that they have it in GCC or one of the uh, training establishment here in Guam, then that's who we would send them to. Okay, and you were saying that they be trained in Excel or QuickBooks? Excel or QuickBooks so that we can have 
uh, a better understanding on how to capture all of the uh, debits and credits and vouchers and everything else that we have. Okay. You, just so you're aware, there's also a lot of um, free Excel and QuickBook online training that's available to them and they could totally take advantage of them at any time. They wouldn't have to wait to sign up for a class at GCC. That being said, I want to ask you, you know, you mentioned that Myra is um, leaving us, and I also want to thank you, Myra, for your service to the government, but I wanted to ask you um, more holistically, do you have succession planning in place? What is your succession plan? The succession plan is what is the Department of Administration's process? If I need an accountant, for example, uh, first I have to be, uh, that position have to be open or, or uh, given to GRTA. Then- So for example, Myra's position. You, okay. you're, you have somebody that's in place, you have an acting ASO that will take over for no, Myra. No, this is only gonna be there in the acting capacity because Myra's position, based on the budget, I believe we cannot hire from uh, one So October. you don't have a succession plan no, no, for no, your agency no, in no, place? No, the succession plan would be, I would go to DOA. I have a vacancy for Myra. Uh, please send me somebody so we can interview them. So you don't have anybody within your agency that you're training yes. to come into these positions? That's a succession plan, no, sir. I, I do have uh, Jennifer. Okay, so your succession plan, has it been approved by the board? The board did not approve my succession. This is an interim plan. Jennifer needs to be qualified to qualify as the uh, ASO. If she's not qualified, she's only there uh, holding down the position until we can find somebody qualified. So the succession plan is really based on uh, the position vacancy, uh, whether the funding is available, and DOA will let us know who is uh, qualified for the position, and then they will send those people to me uh, for, uh, for an interview panel, and then we'll make the, success, uh, the selection. That okay. is the succession plan uh, that I understand from the government of Guam. I just can't say, okay, uh, Jennifer, uh, will you'll be in this position for six months, and then you'll be the uh, administrative office. And I think that's some of the challenges that we're finding government-wide is that, you know, in these agencies, we have people, long-time public servants that have served in their capacities that have incredible institutional knowledge, and then they get ready for retirement, and we don't really have people that we're training up for the weeks and the months and the years to step into their place. And so that's what I mean when I say succession planning. And you need to be able to come up with a concrete plan, have that plan approved, reviewed by your board and approved, sir. And so that's really something that you should take a look at, not just for this particular position, and it's an incredibly important one, but for all of the other people that are employed with GRTA. I understand, Senator. Yeah. Okay. Um, Senator, also, can, I, can I add more sure. to it? Okay. Um, since I decided to retire at the end of the fiscal year, uh, Jennifer uh, is now an acting AA, administrative assistant, because I'm still sitting on the AO right. position. Right. Okay. So um, what what uh, we did, or we cut a GG one to make her um, detailed to an AA. Yep. While she is on the AA um, position, I am training her. Okay. Okay. Now, once my my uh, position is completely vacated, then we are going to cut a GG one for recruitment for my replacement. But right now, uh, Jennifer is acting as uh, administrative assistant doing all, mostly 99% of my present duties and responsibilities are being um, assigned to her. Okay. And I am overseeing her. Thank you, Ms. Myra. Um, Mr. Augustine, we also hear time and time again from our riders, you know, they come into our office, they call our office, and there's constant complaints that 
the buses are late, that maybe we have some issues with the drivers, um, and it just reduces services overall. So my question to you is, how many vans do we have in the fleet? We have 12 vans and 11 buses. 12 vans. How, of those vans, how many are operational? Let me uh, get on my notes. Right now, uh, none of the buses are I'm running. sorry, let's, let's just go with vans first. Okay, vans. So how many vans, there's 12 vans in the fleet. I asked how many are operational. Uh, Senator Lee, I'm going to allow you to get a response on this, but we're going to isolate this particular oversight hearing specifically to what the agenda item is, and that is the OPA uh, non-appropriated funds uh, report specifically, and then we would consider a uh, subsequent hearing. We, we, we will provide that uh, information right after this meeting, and we get back to the office, and we will give it to you. Uh, you're, so you're not sure how many vans are in no, operation. I, I know what we have for many vans. I apologize, Mr. Chair. I just I would want to follow up with one, one additional question. So We've got six vans that's operational. Okay, and then how many buses are in the fleet? Eleven buses. Eleven buses. And how many of those buses are operational? We do not have any bus, GRTA bus that's operational. Uh, let me go further. Uh, we were waiting for a long-term $100,000 NAF funded IFB. Uh, in the interim, we use our own NAF for $25,000, and we had a short-term uh, bus repair program. However, that $25,000 is already being used up. So buses do break. You bring them in for batteries one day, and the next day they break down for, uh, for transmission. So the 25000 we already spent. We're and waiting that, so that for the $100,000 through... to be approved so we can award to the next vendor. So you use non-appropriated funds to repair the buses. But just so I'm clear, you have 12 vans in the fleet and only half of them are operational, so six. You have 11 buses in the fleet and none of them are operational as of today. Yes. And you've exhausted all of your non-appropriated funds attempting to repair these no, vehicles. No, I have not exhausted all of my non-appropriated funds. The 25000 that was identified mm -hmm. is almost exhausted. We're waiting for the $100,000 uh, IFB to be awarded. And if that does not get awarded, then we will go out again for a $25,000 purchase order. We are, we are allowed up to $25,000 and what's the timeline on that $100,000? I'm just very concerned, Mr. Augustine, because no buses are working. Not one. Not one out of the 11 in your I fleet. And only half that. of the I vans are that, working. Senator. Do you? Uh, I understand that, Senator. We've done our part to request procurement to award an IFB. And I was told that it was going to be awarded on the 8th of this month. The 8th which is Saturday. Whether that's going to be actually the award date uh, it remains to be seen, but we have done our part since May 2017 to get this IFB. And here it is already September 2018. We'll have a, a follow-on, possible follow-on follow oversight hearing that will deal with the operational issues as well as the buses. Senator Lee, so. Senator Lee, um, just uh, for everyone's information, the 100000 uh, for the repairs and maintenance, we use the NAF, NAF funds for it because we don't have uh, money for the local budget. So we use the 100000 to fund the repairs and maintenance invitation for bid. The bid process has been completed. It's just it hasn't been awarded yet. So we are waiting for GSA to award a contract or to cut the purchase order and give it to whoever um, the lowest bidder. Additionally, uh, we have never been given maintenance money from local funds. 
until I think it's projected for next year is when we're actually going to get money from local funds for maintenance. In the meantime, we've been using our NAF. Okay, any, Senator Lee, any other questions on the non-appropriated fund performance audit? Thank you, Senator Lee. Senator Nelson, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. St. Augustine, what is GRTA's mission? It's uh, Augustine, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. St. Augustine, what did I say? Uh, Mr. St. Augustine. Uh, otherwise, I'll, Mr. Be, Augustine. I'll be related to the senator here. Dispense it. I lost Mr. my, I lost Mr. my Augustine. Noon a long time ago. Senator St. Augustine was being so nice in the questioning, I forgot that I thought you guys were related. So, uh, so Mr. Augustine, please forgive me. What is, the, what is GRTA's mission? To provide reliable transportation at an affordable cost. To provide affordable, reliable, and accessible island-wide public yes, transportation yes, services. Okay. Yes. So that's your mission statement. That's my mission statement, but uh, I don't believe that that's uh, correct providing island-wide because we do not have the asset to provide island-wide. We follow FDA rules. And how long have you been the executive manager? September 2014. September 2014. That's so right. almost, almost four years, That's no? That's right. Okay. Uh, so because we are restricted to in inquiring about non-appropriated funds, thank you, Mr. Chair, for making that very clear. The, um, the short-term solution that you presented before the, the body is hire a bookkeeping firm to maintain all records, invoices, vouchers, and make a monthly report to GRTA executive manager so that this will be reported during the GRTA monthly board meeting. What is, this cost, what is the cost of this bookkeeping firm? We do not know, and that's why we're going to go out and ask. Uh, I, I was told that it's probably $500 a month, maybe $1,000 a month. Uh, $1,000 a month bookkeeping firm, I think is less than to hire an accountant with benefits at $36,000, for example. Okay, so uh, you have not bid for that yet? No. Okay. What is the purpose of the administrative officer? I am in charge of budget. Okay. Um, so bookkeeping, Ms. Myra? Uh, actually, uh, it's, uh, accounting is in, in included in it because do budget is Do you also is, do invoices is and vouchers? Figures, okay? Uh -huh. And also I'm in charge of uh, the overall procurement of the agency okay. and uh, the HR personnel uh, issues. Okay. Um, this NAF is brand new to us. Okay, we only opened the bank account in uh, 2015. Okay. okay. Now, so it's not brand new, it's about three years old now. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, but then our activities, our um, NAF activities are very, uh, very simple and not that that much or big volume of activities that we are doing every day. Okay, the volume is, is such um, very uh, limited, okay? So I was thinking, we were thinking before that since our uh, activities in the NAF, we didn't really think much about, um, you know, the bank recon and so forth because each item that we um, we spend, okay. Let's say we we cut the cut, uh, we cut the check. We can easily explain or identify what did we use that uh, check for or the payment for, because also whenever we procure any item, we follow the procurement rules and regs. We get three quotations before. We cut no, a check. No, Miss Myra, I understand. You, you, you have a lot on your plate. I have a yes, lot on my plate. Yes. I, I understand that, and yes. I commend you for the work that you've been doing. Yes. And I thank you for that. Thank you. 
Welcome. But you are not the executive manager. Not. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Augustine, what is the chief planner's position there? What does the chief planner do? The chief planner plans uh, uh, our program moving forward and... I'm sorry, sir. Can you please speak into the mic? Our chief planner plans our program for, forward, getting directions from me. Uh, that When I first came in, the chief planner, uh, Mr. Filipina, was a uh, PC3. He was doing PC3, PC2, and planner work. So he was overwhelmed. So if the chief planner gets directions from you, that makes you the subject matter expert, right? Not necessarily. Uh, I so we hired, we, we, they hired an executive manager that would not be a subject matter expert in transportation? I would not be subject matter expert on all government issues. I'm a subject matter expert on no, we're transportation, just talking about issues. Transportation. transportation issues. Yes. Not government issues. We're talking about transportation. And program coordinator for, what is the program coordinator for? I'm going through your organizational chart, and this is just the people you directly oversee. So what does your program coordinator for do? Our program coordinator for got on board uh, less than a year. Uh, since now. But they're a program coordinator for, yes. which means they are qualified and experienced for the job they are hired into. They've been through uh, levels one through three and understand program coordination. So what is your program coordinator for do? My for you? My program coordinator does everything that you mentioned, but she's not too familiar with... I didn't mention anything. I'm asking uh, you what they do. They coordinate federal grants, which is what they've learned from Raleigh, uh, particularly in the area of transportation. FTA is slightly different than the other agencies that we get... Uh, money from, you have to understand FDA uh, circulars. Uh, so this is being trained up and so the uh, handoff between the PC4 and the previous uh, uh, PC, who is now our chief uh, uh, planner, uh, has been completed. Okay. The PC4 has not gone to transportation 101, if I may say that. Uh, so it's, it's scheduled to go to uh, to who, transportation who authorized the hiring of PC4 if they don't know anything about Transportation 101? The, the PC4 comes in as a PC4. We can train people up to a very specific narrow field like transportation. A PC4 can well, do... Well, wouldn't you want to hire someone that's well-versed in transportation, uh, especially at that level? When people, when I get... Especially at the most basic, they have not gone through understanding Transportation when, 101? When, when, when I get a list of people f to be interviewed by DOA, that's the list of people that I interview. And the one that comes closest is who I select. We, we cannot just select and wait and wait and wait. Okay, what is your salary of your PC4? Say again? What is the salary of your PC4? How much does your PC4 make annually? I can give you the, the exact amount, but I, I can guess right now it's about $50,000 annually. I, I, I do not know uh, what direction this question, set of questions is going, uh, Senator. Okay. Because if you're going to pay someone $50,000, I would expect you as the executive manager to say that they are more than qualified and do not need to be trained on transportation 101. That's, that's the direction I'm getting because your mission statement is to provide affordable, reliable, and accessible island-wide public transportation services. This mission statement basically says that you, your buses will be at the locations on time, not having people wait for three hours and some of them are, are disabled customers, they, the, that you will have affordable transportation, which means in page nine of the OPA report, there would not be $350,260 in unauthorized charges that are unaccounted for, nor would there be an additional nor would there be an additional 
$217,450 in charges that exceeded the authorized PO amounts. So your affordable mission statement to provide affordable, your practices negate that. You not being able to service our island residents on time, which is reliable, negates that when our buses are non-operational or they come two to three hours late. And accessible island-wide transportation services, you hiring a PC4 at a PC4 level and specifically stating that they need to be versed in Transportation 101 does not provide for the services that the people demand. I'm not finished yet. This plan that you did and this, this um, you specifically stated that you had to hire an expert in Excel to create an Excel spreadsheet. Um, this one right here, the sample that was passed out. I, I, it is beyond me. Uh, what kind of expertise you would need to have to balance this kind of budget when you have a administrative officer, a PC4, uh, a chief planner, you as the executive manager, um, and then now you want to hire two new accountants. And what is the customer base? How many people do you service? Our ridership averages about 235,000 riders. Uh, may, I, may I now? Uh, That's more than the I, people I, of I, Wong. No, How, no, no, what is your customer that, base? That, that How many not, people do you service? We have 460. About 460 people 460 on, on the people. paratransit, not fixed route, okay. not including fixed well, route. Well, apparently, because we don't have enough buses because they keep on breaking down. So, the, Senator, may I answer some not, of your no, questions? No, 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 uh, Mr. Augustine, I, I just don't. I, I, we have come here time and time again. I mean, we've come here time and time again to look at the people who are riding these buses. Some of them are disabled and we can't have any reliable service. And you've been in this job for four years. I, I don't understand why you are looking to hire two accountants for a 460 personnel customer base after four years. I don't understand why you have to hire a bookkeeping firm to manage your records, invoices, and vouchers. For me, it seems like you're just Mr. Augustine, all I'm asking you to do in this, in this oversight hearing, because we are supposed to look at all of the facts, we're supposed to examine uh, the OPA report, we're supposed to examine the shortcomings, and we're supposed to encourage you to make the way forward. And we've been having oversight hearings, thank you, Mr. Chair, but with over half a million dollars in money that is unauthorized, and then we're having with non-appropriation funds, and then we're just discussing a professional to do specifically Excel worksheets. Um, it just doesn't cut it. You, you're not meeting your mission statement. And uh, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Perhaps I'm, I, my expectation is too high for an executive manager to make sure that the bus services and and the paratransit services are working for the people of Guam. Perhaps my expectation is too high for an executive manager that makes over $80,000 to perform something that is the standard. And if that's the case, then perhaps I'm in the wrong. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Nelson. Any final comments from anyone in the panel? If not, we do have I do, uh, I do have a comment. Uh, uh, stand, stand by, stand by. Senator Lee, you have a question for the mayor? Thank you, yes. Actually, Madam Chair, if you could just, um, maybe in, in closing and, 
and I'm grateful to the to the chairman for having this oversight hearing and for calling for the audit and for our folk, our friends at um, the OPA for taking this opportunity to give us some um, really good data as you know basing some of our our questions on but just in general I feel like GRTA has made minimal improvement we come here time and time again we take a look at you know additional data um, we ask questions based on what the media has given us um, there have been countless oversight hearings um, the OPA has issued their audit reports but I really feel like management should be proactive and in every step of the way it's been totally reactive and you know a problem is pointed out and then you go back and you fix it but there's no proactive approach in terms of this management and the management style and so I wanted to ask you madam chair what your thoughts are about this are you confident in the direction that management has taken GRTA yes I am I am confident um, if you have seen how it was how it was um, before being in a hole in the wall at down at DOA when we first came in we were established it in 2009 um, you know for it to be an autonom autonomous agency I mean now things you know we're, we're hiring people we're getting things moving um, we're trying to fix the schedule we want to um, there's so much that we want to do but we don't want to freak people out with a change and of course uh, putting up meter there's so much ways we can make revenue for um, this agency um, even as we mentioned alone the hundred thousand dollars that we took from the bus fares from the NAF we turned it into DOA you know to get a a purchase order from GSA for maintenance of the buses. Um, I'm very honored and you know I'm really glad we didn't lose the money. We almost lost the funding for these buses we were supposed to procure. And I'm why sorry, is that? Because it was taking too long. You know the whole process, the interference of, of you know others that were um, we're not satisfied with the specs and you know things like that I mean I've I came up you know I was willing to join this board you know as a member of the mayor's council of Guam because I see the need for our people so many around us even myself you know and, and you're satisfied with the, the way that things are operating at GRTA we're not perfect and we have been doing nothing but ask for help you know, I remember talking to all of you when you were all running, meet the candidates at the mall. I wanted to find out what was, you know, how can you help because of hearing where all the funding's going to, and even our request to the OPA to do this audit, to do a audit. I'm so happy I've been at um, a roundtable discussion where the OPA, Doris Brooks, came out and said, you have funding going to every other place but to transportation it was recognized everybody please see that see that the building was given away we have no place to go now we're in DPW but we're also seeing that some of these funds are being mismanaged well and so it's we're, very we're trying to correct that we I want nothing but transparency we want to do everything correctly but now you know with what's being what's what's happening now is you know of course there's somebody parading saying fire him you know that's just their intention is is fire him get rid of him replace him with this guy my husband used to drive for fleet services back then when it was Bob Duenas handling it you know so um, you know I've known the bus system for the longest time too you know people will criticize me saying you're a mayor you never tried riding the bus you know I had a single parent I grew up riding the bus you know things have changed I work hard so that I can have a car so I don't have to wait for the bus anymore but you know it'd be great to save gas and park it and you know go where I need to go on a, on a, a reliable transportation that comes on time but then there's also 
a lot of wonderful guests that we have on island that have come and are really happy with the bus service that we have. You know, we, we have, there, there's, there's so many bus riders out there. But, but I when just you don't keep see that the, happening if there's no buses that are in operation. It's, well, we, we want to get in an operation. You, so we're showing you that we have had money put in since last year. We, you know, we need help to get the, the purchase order out. There's, you know, we, we've identified, you know, um, making use of the bus fares to, to get these buses fixed. We want it fixed. We want it all running out there. Those buses are beautiful. I'm so proud of that. Nihi Tafan Hano, you know. Um, we want it to work for everybody. But, you know, like I said, the way things are going now, you know, because we service over 2,000 people a day. Um, and then there's, you have a select few complainers that want to just tear us down. You know, we, we have to look at everything, the big okay, picture. Okay, Mayor, Mayor, if you can conclude your statements, because we do have some people in the audience who may have to, would like to provide comments on the non-appropriated funds. Thank you. Okay, okay to all the panel members, uh, Mr. Augustine, any final comments? Can you turn on the uh, mic, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. I provided two pieces of paper. I was uh, asked several times how long have I been with this organization. So I think it's time for me to answer. What have we accomplished? Uh, Mr. Augustine, you have provided uh, the committee members with a copy of your document, so we will glean through it a little later. Okay? okay. Thank, thank you. you very much, Mr. Augustine, and thank you very much uh, to OPA uh, for initiating this particular performance audit. Thank you very much. You reflect. I mean, some of your findings were very critical in the process, and in this particular case, there's got to be some fixes to the system. So thank you for your participation in this. Thank you, folks. I do see uh, any statements with regards to non-appropriated funds, folks, because that's the item on the agenda. I did not expand it specifically because we wanted to focus on some of the issues associated with this fund. And if it's deemed necessary, then we will have an oversight hearing with regards to the operational activities at GRTA. So is there anyone in the audience? You're all dismissed, please. Panel members, thank you. Anyone in the audience would like to provide any comments with regards to non-appropriated funds? We have, uh, if any of you are gonna provide comments, please come forward. Ms. Porter, if you can identify yourself for the record and please provide your statement. Yes, I'm, I'm if, Ginger Porter. If you're going to read, you, I know you, we have a copy of your testimony, Ms. Porter, if I can ask you to uh, highlight certain portions because yes, I will each committee member was provided a copy. I will only provide those comments appropriate to the NAF okay. funding. Thank you, Ms. Porter. I'm Ginger Porter, a resident of Asan, and I'm a former member of the Board of Directors of Guam Regional Transit Authority. I have 15, 14 years of engagement in transit issues and seven successful years of management at the Guam Community College, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak on the topics addressed by this oversight hearing. The issue of this oversight hearing, the non-appropriated funds of GRTA, is of interest to me. As a board member, I had opportunity to observe and report uh, and to other board members the failure of the executive manager to appropriately manage finances for economy and efficiency of transportation services where spending failed to follow protocol of seeking board review and permission to proceed. That was evidenced by the implementation of the Southern Shuttle. Now, I recently had the opportunity to review documents that were requested under Freedom of Information Act for the non-appropriated fund activity from April 7, 2016 through August 17, 2018 that provided detail of all documents supporting the expenses for parts and repairs, service categories, as identified in the OPA report number 18-06. Um, I've provided the committee uh, a review of the summary of these documents, which I organized uh, by date, 
Uh, but they did not include other services provided to the agency as was requested. And it's my understanding that the NAF funds also provide payment for cleaning services provided to the uh, ag agency office. <clears throat> my review reflected concerns expressed by the GRTA office staff regarding necessary check and balance processes for expenditures from NAF, not particularly from collections, but in regards to expenditures. Of concern is a dual role that the executive manager assumed in providing approval for payments and then was also a signer on the checks for payment. A second signer was board chairwoman Louise Rivera. Based on the documents provided under the FOIA request, most purchases lacked quotes and purchase orders. Both executive manager Augustine and board chairwoman signed for payment and it appeared that Ms. Rivera may have signed checks without requesting or reviewing supporting doc documentation as they were not provided through the FOIA. There were payments to Americana suppliers that appeared to be made under an arrangement of open procurement for $24,999, and there was lacking evidence of any supporting documentation of quotes, bid processes, or purchase order. No official purchase order was provided. In evidence was an American supplier's shop handwritten note of a balance sheet where next to a line for purchase order was written the amount of $24,999 with initials QF. And invoices for work orders were submitted for those <coughs> charges signed by Eric Flores, Flores and provided for payment. I've questioned the use uh, several times of GRTA's uh, personal use of RAV4 and Ford F-150 truck for they do appear as some re minor repairs from the NAF. The board um, minutes of July 18 report that uh, the board had designated two vehicles as 24 hours vehicles, one for the north and one for the south. And I think it would behoove this panel to question the frequency of call outs as to uh, how those vehicles are put into service outside the hours of normal working hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If the responses fail to meet the test, uh, it would indicate that public dollars for fuel and maintenance are going towards personnel use under the permission of the executive manager and the board chairwoman. Perha um, perhaps this agreement should be questioned by this committee. It has the appearance to me of a trade-off for the use of the GRTA 2006 Kia van that is assigned to Mayor's Rivera's Tatuja office. Although there are procedures for transferring equipment between agencies, the van remains in the GRTA inventory and is noted on GRTA's Schedule for vehicle registration. The NAF audit and requested FOIA documents to me raise a red flag on the financial operations of GRT under the management of Mr. Enrique Augustine and oversight of board chairwoman Louise Rivera. Management has ignored proper governmental ex expenditure processes in spite of completing government procurement training. And actions in regards to NAF fund expenditures have been questioned by GRTA staff with a plea for help for external review and intervention. Supervision of management and the chairmanship of Luis Rivera has been loosely applied. The chairwoman is known to avoid placing anything in writing, relying on verbal communication. Therefore, there is little to no documentation of corrective action, communication, or directives. Both the executive manager and chairwoman re rely too much on jungle rules and father knows best management. And this is, I believe, grinding the operations of GRTA into the ground. Although the chairwoman has recently stated that GRTA is headed in a good direction, I beg to differ. The present management has not provided for future plans, a coordinated transportation plan, assistance planning, or budgetary plan to increase revenue. He's pushed away individuals who can provide him with assistance. Uh, the governor provided a public statement requesting his resignation, this body. This legislative committee has chastised his inability to properly respond to their questioning and his failure to ensure public safety within operations. Unfortunately, the writing public is bearing the brunt of his actions and the general public is seeing questionable expenditure of their tax dollars. And that includes the NAF funds. 
His sole supporter has been that of the board chairwoman. In all the years that I've been involved in searching and selecting personnel, I know that given the opening of this position, there is talent in this community that can provide better management and future direction for GRTA. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Porter, for your statements and providing the committee. Uh, if I can ask the chairwoman and, and Mr. Augustine to please take note of some of the comments that were provided, and we'll leave it for your consumption. Any other individuals in the audience who would like to provide comments on the non-appropriated funds and like the, share, the chair shared a little earlier, uh, should there be a need to proceed with an oversight hearing on GRTA subsequent to this date, then that would be under consideration. Any, anyone else? If there are no other comments or individuals who would like to provide public testimony, then this concludes the oversight hearing on the GRTA uh, not appropriated funds. And on behalf of the committee, we'd like to thank all those who provided testimony and most especially the audience who uh, participated in today's session. Thank you very much, Jesus Masi.